Hello and welcome back. This is going to be, um, well, kind of an intuitive reading about an upcoming gateway that I'm sensing. And I'm realizing that there's kind of a, I, I often do readings um, both with cards and astrology and intuition for portals, which for me are, I'm noticing the difference. There's like a portal is usually a day that is very specific and the energy will carry through but it's usually like that that day is a specific portal like i think that um the upcoming solar eclipse on 12 14 is a portal itself but there are gateways that come about too and i think it'll make more sense when i describe this one so what i'm sensing is kind of i think i might call it the gateway of surrender and Actually, it's funny, I just had a funny vision about uh, in the never-ending story where they send the main character in the in the book through the gateways with the sphinxes. Like the first one, he's got to be pure of heart. And then the second one, where uh, it's the oracle, where he gets the information wanted. But, um, and that might be relevant. You never know. I know that when this... Uh, separation first started and I started to surrender to it there was a lot of never-ending story stuff that came up um, in any case what I'm sensing is this is like a gateway of surrender and it's part of what I did what I've been doing readings on about the great unraveling of the karmic carnival and what I noticed is interesting. So tomorrow is 12-12-2020. Now, I was going to do some talks just about that as a portal and then about 12-21 as a portal. But I think that it's actually a gateway and that what I'm getting, I've been seeing a lot of synchronicities today. Uh, the number 13, the number 15, the number 7, the number 6, and especially 6 with many zeros. So like 6 to the power of, etc, etc. And I'm noticing that there are... Huh, that's funny. A truck just drove by. It said, born and raised in the outdoors. It's a good time to get outside, I suppose. Even if it's cold. It is cold here, hence the warm gear um but i'm also i've been seeing a lot about um one spin to win like it, and it's funny it's kind of a casino reference but it also fits in with the carnival reference too and the great unraveling is this energy that i've been saying i just saw 241 on the clock too that's seven um and three, two, one on the other clock. So that's like, that's unspinning energy. And what I've been getting the sense of is like, we've been going through this really big karmic energy that has taken us back into our shadow energy, especially when Mars went retrograde a little over four months ago. It just came out of it and we're just like barely into the area where we're past the post shadow of that retrograde. So, you know, there's a lot more momentum going on, but all but one planet that I'm aware of have come out of retrograde. Uranus should be the only one, as far as I know, that is still in retrograde. I think Chiron, which is a comet, is just coming out of retrograde, and that's the that's the wounded healer. And so with all these planets coming out of retrograde, I mean, think about what's been going on for you over the last four months. I know for myself and the collectives that I've been part of, the communities I'm a part of, especially Twin Flame collectives, have been going through a lot of shadow work. It's been very intense. It's been very, we've been calling it fun house mirrors. And then what I started to pick up on was like this great unraveling. Like it, we went deeper, 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 deeper into our shadow stuff. DMs and, and DFs that have been in karmic situationships went even more into those shadows. Any sort of addictions got way, way worse. Any sort of financial problems got way, way worse. Mother wounds, father wounds, childhood wounds, all that stuff you know it it got more and more intense and the image that i got was that it's like if you took a spinning top one of those toys that you spin on the table but say you like you took the time and you wrapped a thread around it and then you put your finger on it and you pulled that thread and then you let it just all over right till it drops off the end of the table or it spins itself out and like plops on the table like that's the sort of energy that this great unraveling is doing and then I realized if you think about it so 12 is the hanged man card so we have 
tomorrow, 12 12 2020. It's an amplification, first and foremost, of hanged man energy. What is hanged man energy? If you look, the hanged man hangs himself on a branch over the well of knowledge by a ribbon. It is not like tight it is not knotted to the point he can't get out of it because he did it himself he is intentionally hanging himself there to gain new perspective which is very in my opinion alice in wonderland right if you can't get a new perspective what, try something different stand on your head or very willy wonka if you want you know it's embracing the absurdities as if when you're standing upright you can't think of it any differently try standing on your head <laughs> you know try surrendering to the situation and in a in a positive way in a neutral way it's also a lot of times um what i call a universal timeout when you see that and so if we take just that basic part there and we don't go any further into the numerology and then we look at 1221 which is a reflection when you see 1221 um, typically you are reflecting something you could be reflecting the universe the universe could be reflecting you. you if you're in a twin flame journey you could be reflecting your twin um, same thing with it you know it like 1331 things like that it's a reflective it's reflective energy the community the, the communication the spirit is communicating to you that in that moment in, in that time you are reflecting something and 21 is the energy of the world card which is the last major arcana card in the deck and what do we see in the world card is a feminine energy that is like levitating they're suspended like the hangman in the middle of a wreath surrounded by all the signs and everything in there and she is completely naked except for a ribbon and the image that came to me is like if you take the hanged man like if you took the hangman and he hangs himself up there and you spun him around <laughs> like he just tore everything off of him he tore all the clothes off of him everything until he was so dizzy he had no idea who he was anymore and then you flipped him over and there was all that was left was this ribbon you'd have the world card and I, I'm really feeling like that's what this portal of surrender is about because both cards are about surrender. And a lot of times even if you find that you are, are I want to say, not stuck, but if you, if you keep seeing the hanged man or you keep seeing 12 a lot, or if you have someone you're thinking about that you, you, you see the number 12 a lot around them, it's, you can sometimes then go, oh, well, the reflection of 12 is 21, which is the world card. So to get out of hanged man energy, you can go to world card energy. But in order to do that, that means next chapter. That means leveling up. It means surrendering to spirit even more because both cards are about surrendering to spirit, releasing control, releasing your exes, releasing your shadows, looking for new perspectives, allowing, allowing just the energy of allowing. Like you're not pulling things in, you're not needing things in, you're not wanting things in, you're not efforting. There's no efforting as Abraham Hicks talks about. It's just surrender. And then if we go a little bit further, so 12, 12, 20, 20. If we break that down, 12 is three. So 12, 12, three, three. We've got Empress energy enhanced there. And then make that six, right? And so then we've got the lovers. So we've got the hanged man, we've got the empress and we've got the lovers all in this this you know all in tomorrow's day and then we add 2020 which is the judgment card and the high priestess and the emperor all just in 2020 on itself but if we just take it very simply and we take six and we add to four we get 10 which is the wheel of fortune one spin to win right one spin to win and what i'm getting the sense of in that is like for those of you who are ready for what comes next, I mean, if you're on a twin flame journey, you feel like that's union. Um, really, if you're really ready for union, then you already feel like you have it. And whether or not it's there in the 3D and you're looking for something more personal, but it could be that or it could be the level up in your career. It could be a new living situation, whatever it is, one spin to win. Like think, think of it as a game, like, okay, if I'm gonna allow myself to surrender and I'm gonna allow the universe to maneuver me in whatever ways it sees that will help me, will help provide me with the best contrast to bring, bring me what it is that I've been manifesting, then this is a great gateway for that. Now, 
I'm also been sensing um, with the eclipse. I mean, the eclipse is happening in Sagittarius uh, um, because it's a it's a solar eclipse, and it's the only uh, full solar eclipse that we have had all year and will have all year. And so that energy is very much like Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So it's about exploration, enlightenment, and expansion, which is a lot of times what manifestation is. You're expanding, you're moving up to the next level, things like that. And so think about, think about what you can release starting tomorrow. Like what, think of like, you know, go for the hangman thing, start to like, I don't know, stand on your head if you really need to, or lie down, or, or get in a different position, or close your eyes, or, you know, to, uh, do something that you would normally have your kids do, or, or do something that's just completely off the wall, and do something totally radically different, and then think about, what is it, okay, what is it that I don't want in my life, and based on what I don't want, what do I want? And then really stop, and I think because of the Sagittarian energy especially, it's important that we start to look at who we feel we really are when we strip away all of the labels. So take away your job or and or how money comes in. Take away um, your religion. Take away like being a, a, a mom, dad, sibling, child, etc. Take away even uh, even hobbies like keep going like who am i when i take away what i do for work who am i when i take away myself in a relationship who am i when i remove the label of my nationality who am i when i remove the label of my role in family who am i who am i when you just get down to the basic level and I'm not going to give you examples of how to answer that question because it's important for you to figure out what that means for you. And that's very Sagittarian energy. It is when I think of the, the, the ninth house, which is Sagittarius's house of, as a room in a house, I think of it as the library with a little altar in it. Just a little altar of things. And, and it's a it's very introspective energy it's fire sign energy too so it's passionate about that introspective energy because once you really align with who you are when you take away all the labels you can really start to manifest at a whole different level because you're no longer attached I see 331 on the clock seven um, you're no longer attached to the worldly things that we get attached to in the earlier houses and going through those lessons. And if you can do that, if you can go into it surrendering, being ready to be to be stripped down until you're at the world card level and you're just, you're naked, all except for that one ribbon, that one thread of who you are. And, and then you can really figure out who you, what you want to do, who you want to be with, etc. And then the people around you will start to reflect that. Now, I don't, I, I would definitely recommend that when you think about doing this stuff, include in your prayers and your manifestations um, that you're desiring to feel this in an easy way. But sometimes big stick energy is fun and it can be scary sometimes but don't run from it if you get if you find in your unraveling and you're breaking down to the vulnerable levels that it gets a bit scary embrace it embrace it it's going to be intense energy and 1221 in particular is an I, I don't even fully know all of what the portal is or that well it's a gateway, but I don't know exactly what that day is itself. I'm still looking into it because we have the, the Bethlehem star uh, returning after like 300 years. And we have a conjunction happening between Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus that hasn't been seen in exactly the way it is in over 900 years. And that's very interesting in itself. I mean, nine is a hermit energy. And so nine to the power of a hundred. And then um, the Bethlehem star, which is a guiding star, it's like the star card. 3.33 on the clock now, um, is the Empress to the power of 100, too. So, and so then, again, we see more Empress energy. Even 9 could be broken down into 3. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of divine feminine energy in this whole gateway and all of these portals. And I'll do, I'll, I'll do some more readings. I'll pull some cards and do stuff like that for each of these days and the eclipse and all of this. But for right now, I just, I felt really called to come on and talk about this because it feels like it's a really good opportunity uh, for those of you that are looking 
I don't know, to be in alignment with the universe and allow healing to happen, not force it to happen. And I will say I'm definitely noticing that there's a, a big focus on orange and green, which is heart chakra and sacral chakra. So this could be very intense for anyone who's, um, who's got betrayal energy to heal, which is heart chakra stuff, and or sexual trauma, sexual shame, uh, consent violations, things like that, which is um, sacral chakra. So think about stuff in those areas that you would like to release, especially with the eclipse. And solar eclipses are different than lunar eclipses, but they're still eclipses, which is a releasing of energy, much like full moons. And this one is happening, ironically, on a new moon, which is also about planting seeds. So it's a very interesting energy. To, it's, it's a duality of its own sorts, which actually makes sense because the, op the polar opposite of Sagittarius is Gemini, and that's all about duality. All right, I'm going to leave this here and I will come back and do some readings more specifically on those days, but I don't know. Use this energy how it feels best for you and I'll catch you in the next video.